Hi guys, welcome back to Let's Go Candid with Uja. We are back again with yet another exciting episode for you this time with Mr. Anurag Jain, the founder of Milk Basket. Good afternoon, sir. We're so delighted to have you here with us today. Good afternoon, Max. Milk Basket is a daily delivery service which has been gaining more and more popularity since it was founded in 2015. With unique customer-centric features, Milk Basket is sure to be a Gen Z and millennials' favorite way to get their groceries. Mr. Anurag Jain is not only an amazing entrepreneur with a PGDM from XLRI and tons of managerial experience in prestigious companies, but also an ex-army major. Clearly, there is nothing he cannot do. So, without further ado, let's get to know him. So, sir, should we begin with the first segment? Yeah, sure. Okay, sir. So, sir, the, the first question for today is: You served in the Indian Army for five years. and then entered the corporate world and eventually founded milk basket our audience is curious to know what led you to enter the world of entrepreneurship and what hardships you faced along the way okay see that's an interesting question because uh, 20 years back when i graduated from nit kurukshetra as a civil engineer i had no clue that this is the roller coaster ride that i'm going to face I had cleared my M Tech and uh, joined School of Planning and Architecture in New Delhi. Uh, that was the time when I got an interview call from the Light Forces, the Indian Army, and I belong to a Jain family with sort of no core relation to the armed forces. Till I was one of the two candidates selected in the batch to join the forces. Uh, thereafter, it was a remarkable experience with the Indian Army, where they teach you. more than you could ever imagine so after 5 years of service with the indian army i decided to move out and did a course from exercise jamshedpur and thereafter i landed up uh, as a project manager of for spencers retail limited so from there i did uh, some retail stores uh, and mo- moving on i went to cinepolis india did some multiplexes for them then again to vishal mega mart to do more retail stores and then to samsung electronics so this has been by far my journey before milk basket it was then when i met anand goel who is the ceo and co-founder at milk basket and he persuaded me to this unknown concept of grocery delivery which we later named as milk basket so i think during this entire journey it was never planned to become an entrepreneur but uh, as fate would have it I'm... what an inspiring story sir i'm so i'm sure a lot of budding entrepreneurs in our audience will be able to relate to it yeah so sir for the next question being a part of our nation's prestigious army and being a successful entrepreneur are two very different things did it bring about any major lifestyle changes yeah i think uh, they are like two ends of the spectrum uh, as a officer in indian army you have so much of privileges and so much of responsibilities and the lifestyle is totally different there you are working in a set schedule which is sort of going to change every day because uh, at one time you might be working in siachen the other time you might be working in a peace posting in say delhi other time you might be posted in assam so the terrain the kind of job requirement and the kind of work that you do uh, everything keeps on changing in the indian army uh, however as an entrepreneur uh, the lifestyle is totally different you don't know what you are aiming for for the next day it's just that you are passionate about what you are doing and you know that you are going to put in all that you have to sort of succeed so that's why uh, the sort of pressure the sort of challenges that you face as an entrepreneur they are definitely challenging but yes if i compare it with the indian army uh, there are no challenges as big as being part of an indian armed forces so sir was it easy for you to cope with these routine changes that you might, must have faced no it's not easy see you have to sort of adapt to the situation and you have to be 
uh, ready to modify yourself to handle the situation in the best possible manner. So as I uh, firmly believe, you have to create opportunities out of the challenges. So that's the way you, uh, you need to think and that's how you need to get over your challenges and be ready for the next one. Very well put, sir. Sir, in these difficult times where startups and companies are struggling for survival, Mill Basket has raised funds through its Series B rounds. What factors made it possible and what were the challenges? So if I talk about the funding that we have raised so far, so I think it is all because of the model that we have, because we firmly believe in the model and then we were able to convince the investor to believe in that same model. And luckily for us, we uh, have sort of not pivoted the model very much. What we emphasized uh, five years back, we are still working on the same lines and we hope to continue to do the same. So the challenge basically, uh, I would say the major challenges is that uh, uh, during this pandemic and all, uh, it's really difficult for you to reach out to so many investors and all. However, if you have a strong background and a strong model and strong numbers to support, uh, definitely it becomes uh, much more easier to reach out and raise funds. So uh, fund raise, raising funding is, I think, is a two-way process and it takes a lot of effort to be able to do that. And that's why uh, one of the founders, Anand Goyal, is continuously working on the same. So it needs a dedicated resource. So, sir, how does it feel to be bagged by top investors such as Unilever Ventures and so many more? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, it basically uh, gives us the confidence that yes, we are doing something unique and something uh, which is uh, putting an impact on the society and we are able to service so many people. And uh, that's why we firmly believe that the model is going to uh, create much more positive impact in so many more lives. Absolutely, sir. So, Milk Basket over the years has expanded into many categories of products. So, what was your thought process while entering to the niche market of milk when you were starting out? Okay, so basically if you uh, talk about how we started, uh, it's like milk in India is a very, very basic commodity which uh, I'm sure every one of us even today use and parents are like after all of us to drink milk and milk related products. So what happens when you say talk about the tier one cities is that the milk delivery is very very fragmented and it was owned by the local players. So the experience of uh, milk delivery and uh, having that uh, say uh, uh, trust in the quality of milk were the two different challenges that we uh, emphasized in 2015. Yes, there is a, a need for a player who can actually organize all this thing and can ensure that whatever you are ordering, you are getting the best quality without any doubt, without any uh, distrust and you can rely on the service and say, like uh, in Milk Basket, what we commit is that you will get your order before 7 a.m. in the morning. So I think that's again a very big challenge for the uh, societies where uh, people are uh, very hard bound on time and uh, not able to cope up with the morning routine. So if you are ensured that, okay, before 7 a.m., you're going to get your deliveries and your household is going to run smoothly, I think that brings a lot of relief to many of our customers. So that's how we thought that, okay, uh, this is something which uh, needs to be solved and it's a genuine problem. And I'm happy to say that uh, uh, after five years, we are witnessing that there are a lot of customers who face this uh, these issues and they're happy with our service. Absolutely, sir. When we order online, we just want like magically the things to appear in front of us. So the prompt delivery must be a huge for the for milk basket it is so uh, I'm, I can just add by saying that uh, in our discussions we used to call it a center delivery like 
have, you order by midnight and whatever you have ordered the next day morning it appears magically at your doorstep before 7 am absolutely what our generation wants <laughs> so sir how do you see all your competition such as big basket grofers and now even uh, amazon and swiggy zomato entering the grocery space what seems to be the reason that everybody is after the same market see i would say uh, the first first of all competition is always welcome it has to be an healthy competition and without competition you will not know where you stand um, if we talk about uh, various uh, big players which are in the market for e-commerce grocery so i think uh, it's a very big market it has uh, a space for every player and whoever is able to service the customer in the best possible way will be the winner so that's how i feel that it's uh, it doesn't matter whether it is amazon or its grocers or anyone else but it's about what you deliver what you promise to deliver and how uh, well you are able to service the customer that would be the unique differentiator for any of the players very true sir So, so while going through the successful journey of milk basket we came to know about two key acquisitions psr supply chain services and veggie india we would love to know how the acquisitions have helped the entity so far and what made milk basket acquire them okay so uh, these two were very relevant acquisitions for us uh, particularly because at that point of time we were uh, trying to expand our footprint in uh, northern india particularly in say noida and uh, these were were already established players which were working in the same field and had uh, efficient supply chain as well as resources so we were able to leverage both of these and uh, we were able to uh, sort of grow faster and at a, a, a breakneck speed which we wanted to do at the uh, at that point of time and it helped us in uh, put costing around 3x growth in a small period of 3 months uh, in that region so that's how it worked for us like you said that must have been a roller coaster yeah that's just a part of it so sir we were talking about the delivery model just now so would you like to elaborate more on your delivery model and especially the impact it must have uh, had because of covid okay so let me uh, tell you briefly what uh, milk basket model is all about so basically we are an online grocery player uh, we carry more than 8000 sku's as of now and you can compare us with the uh, your nearby kirana store from where you can get anything and everything of your daily needs uh, requirement so uh, you can order on milk basket not just milk or dairy products you can order anything from a broom to a uh, pulses or to water chawal dal anything that you want you can order from milk basket so what we promise is that uh, you have a window of the entire day you can order till midnight 12 and whatever you order whatever is there in your basket will get delivered to you the next day morning before 7 am so that's the model and uh, it's basically night operation but once the orders are freezed at 12 post it we do the picking and packing at our hubs and then we deliver it to the customer's doorstep before 7 am and as a customer you also get this uh, leverage that it's a one click ordering so whatever sku you want you can just do one click and uh, it gets added to a basket and if you don't want the sku you can remove it before 12 midnight and you can also set a recurring order for your essential items like fruits vegetables or um milk products or anything that you want or breads breakfast items anything that you want you can set a recurring order for the same and uh, that will get delivered to you automatically on top of it it's a prepaid wallet kind of a model so you don't have to worry about whether i do i have to pay in cash or there is no interaction with the delivery boy and all so it's a contactless delivery model so that's where it uh, actually uh, we were say ahead of the curve in when it came to the pandemic situation because we were already doing contactless delivery and we were into this essential services so that's why uh, we 
were able to sustain ourselves and we were also able to service a lot of customers during the pandemic period and we feel proud that we also uh, started a service for especially for the senior citizens who were not able to say go out and get their groceries during the pandemic and we were delivering the orders at their doorstep so uh, pandemic has been a uh, face changer for us uh, we have seen a growth in revenue despite the pandemic uh, however it has been very difficult to maintain the operation space because everyone was um, in the initial days was very fearful of uh, what this uh, covid 19 is uh, but we were able to manage it uh, i think very smoothly that's amazing sir so sir one of the really exceptional features of milk basket is that it does not have a checkout option like you just shared with us so yeah. could you share with us how this feature or lack thereof as the case is may have, uh, maybe has helped your institution and what difficulties you faced while trying to implement it okay so okay so milk basket when we created in 2015 it was uh, based on the facts that okay there are let's say so many grocery places in this uh, uh, segment and there were so many more coming up each day so what are the unique features what are the unique differentiation elements that we can create and no checkout was one of the uh, i think biggest things biggest elements that we had in our model because you know when you are ordering uh, groceries uh, at any of the platforms you are generally worrying about okay i have to say uh, make my cart to rupees 2000 to in order to get a free delivery or say uh, after the checkout you have to say save your cards uh, on that platform or make payments again and again so it's like it becomes like you have to create your own laundry list and then uh, search for those items get those items and then out of 10 items sometimes you will end up say ordering eight items and when the delivery will come you will probably get six items so your need is not getting satisfied so those were the pain areas so what we did is that uh, to make the customer experience uh, uh, very very meaningful and very very uh, uh, i think delightful is uh, that there was no checkout okay it was just one click like you just open the app you click one button and say your product is added now you do whatever you want so like you are taking this interview right now after 5 minutes if you want to order on milk basket you just have to press one button and it's done and you can forget about it and during the day whenever you feel that okay i have to add one another thing say i want to have eggs tomorrow morning and you want to add x in the basket you just add one more item or if you want to remove the um, butter you had already added you can do that any time so we gave that freedom to our customer that okay whatever you want to do whatever you want to play around you don't have to remember because see this is just such a mundane task why you want to remember everything that okay what i want or what what should i plan whenever you want when you want to say get anything just open the app and just click one button and it's done Once so again, an impatient. Uh, once again, an impatient Gen Z's paradise. Yeah. So uh, that was uh, that was something unique uh, that our app uh, had, and I think uh, this feature was loved by many. And particularly because in uh, in tier one cities and all, when say your office timings are also not so, uh, I would say, um, they they are not so. Uh, easy on you sometimes you get back to the uh, house at say around 8 pm or 9 pm and if say you are driving back home and uh, by the time you reach home all the nearby markets are closed so even if you want one packet of milk or one uh, bread that also you might not get so absolutely no more of the dhaniya layout scenes <laughs> yeah that's true even even like say if you are traveling back from the airport because um, there are a lot of uh, uh, working executives who keep on traveling although not during these times but yes <laughs> earlier this that was the case so you are coming back say at around 10 or 11 pm so even if you are sitting at uh, in, in inside your air, uh, aircraft and you have just landed all you need to do is just have, open the app and click one button and tomorrow morning it will be there like a center delivery <laughs> absolutely magical yeah 
So, sir, would you say that this is the USP of Milk Basket, or are there any other distinct features that we have missed? I think these are the main features, and uh, other than that, like uh, uh, there was no question asked refund policy, wherein uh, if you are not satisfied, we are happy to refund the amount, and uh, the, we have a prompt customer service to sort of uh, supplement the delivery ops that we have, and uh, we ensure that whatever we are carrying on our platform, uh, they are like from various uh, brands, and we only deliver you the best product that are available in the market. That's absolutely amazing, sir. So, sir, we have seen history be created in the recent past in the retail domain and have even witnessed the acquisition of the Future Group by Reliance. So, what are your thoughts regarding all this? What implications does it have and what is the future of e-retail? I think e-retail is the future is very bright. Everyone is now trying to um, get their hands on e-retail because that's going to be the next, uh, I think, normal in which people are going to get more and more online and going to buy more stuff online. Like already, uh, we are seeing that uh, uh, companies like Amazon and Flipkart, they have established their, themselves in terms of uh, the user base and people getting used to the idea of uh, purchasing stuff online. Now, just like uh, your uh, clothes or say shoes, which used to be so difficult, like uh, you would be very, very uh, choosy about them or you like, you want to try them, uh, whether the size fits or not. If people are able to buy those things online, buying groceries online is I think hardly, uh, um, it's a no brainer. You 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 know which brands you want to buy you know what stuff you want and if someone is providing you delivery at your doorstep i think this nothing beats that and absolutely as far as the acquisition uh, of future retail is concerned i think uh, that's a great step uh, it's uh, definitely history in making and it's going to consolidate the market further and definitely it's going to uh, give us more uh, market leaders as well as more players are going to come in into the sector. Absolutely, sir. So, sir, for the last question of this segment, we would love it if you would share your experience in this industry with our audience and also some key learnings you had along the way. So, uh, like in a startup, basically, uh, I would say the biggest advantage that you have is that when you are starting up as an entrepreneur, uh, you get to taste everything you get to understand the complications as well as implication of each and every uh, decision that you make and you get to say don many hats and uh, uh, are able to become say a marketeer to a human resource guy to an operations guy to uh, a customer care executive or whatever you call it so uh, i have so the four co-founders they have done the first 25 deliveries on day one themselves. So the number of co-founders who did the delivery was more than the number of delivery boys that we had. So if we start like that, definitely it's a long journey and definitely there are a lot of things to learn. Uh, I think it's just patience and resilience that's going to take you through. That's truly amazing and inspiring to hear, sir. With this lovely answer, we bring this segment to an end. Now for the truly candid half of the session, I would like my friend Apar to take over. I think the audience is loving all your honest answers, sir. So as the name of this series suggests, let's take things more candid as we have some fun filled questions for you in this segment. We can begin whenever you're ready, sir. Yeah, sure, Apar. Describe yourself in three words. Okay. I am patient resilient and introvert that's quite interesting sir what's a question you really don't want to be asked yeah i don't think there is any question that i don't want to be asked i can answer anything that you want me to answer that's great sir what was the major turning point in your life major turning point in my life uh, i think there was one incident uh, wherein i actually plunked in class ninth 
uh, in one of the uh, term examinations and uh, there was one of my friends who said that uh, yeah agar bina pade like uh, the day before the exam i was actually playing cricket so the next day i just went and uh, gave the exam so when he got to know that so he said yaar agar bina pade tere economics mein itne aa sakte to padega to kitne aayenge <laughs> so i think i have never looked back and uh, have been uh, on the brighter side of the studies uh, since then and it has really helped me uh, during my whole life being uh, a civil engineer and then doing uh, a course from auxiliary as well and even in the army i was good in whatever studies that i have done so as you told, uh, told something about the army the one thing you like the most about indian army i think uh, indian army it the best part is that it you go there as a boy and it turns you into man so it's like you will get unmatched experience unmatched uh, learnings unmatched uh, uh, brotherhood and camaraderie in the indian army which you will probably not get anywhere else i can go on to say that it should be a compulsory uh, sort of a tenure for first two years or three years for everyone to experience that life because mm-hmm. that's something that really uh, puts you in the uh, fast lane to actually believe in yourself and to become so confident that you can face any challenges it's quite interesting so uh, can you tell the best advice that you've received till date i think that would be to believe in yourself once you believe in yourself then only you will be able to accomplish things that maybe others will not even imagine uh, any two things that you would change about yourself i would change about myself so i don't think that i would change anything about myself i am happy the way i am uh, rather i would say that uh, it's uh, if you have to change it's basically you should become more adaptable to the situation because it's not every time that you can change everything about say uh, about the environment or about the surrounding that you are in but it's more important to be able to adapt into those yes that's truly really impressive so would you like to share any funny incident from your forge days forge days uh it's been a long time now uh, but uh, yeah so there was one uh, flood relief operations in gujarat which i was as a young captain i was uh, leading the uh, operations and we were in say motor boats uh, uh, in totally uh, flood rate uh, area in gujarat near amdavad and mm-hmm. we uh, saw that uh, there are say some people uh, who are going to drown like two three people are going to drown and we uh, with our three four boats we just rushed to that spot it was quite far off it was like say we had to uh, travel around 2 km to reach that spot uh, but once we reached there it was not people it was actually a buffalo <laughs> 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 but it was fun and uh, definitely we were able to create an impact by saving many lives over there so it was a good experience yes that's quite funny so we know that milk basket is looking to expand in more cities what else can we expect in near future uh we sincerely hope to be able to service more and more people and in uh, many more cities as of now we are uh, taking it a little slow uh, but definitely you will uh, see milk basket in more than 10 cities very soon yes sir that's quite good. impressive so what three advice would you give to the budding entrepreneurs entering the dynamic business world okay so i think the first one would be um, as i said that the best advice is to believe in yourself and the second one will be to uh, like in army what you say is that when you are going to a battle uh, you need to be aware of who who your enemy is and what is the situation in the battlefield what are the tools that you have to fight 
so basically as an entrepreneur also you need to be aware of uh, what are the uh, surround uh, what are what is happening in the particular segment that you are going to target who your target customer is is the problem that you are trying to solve a relevant problem or not and once you have done all the uh, hard work on uh, because you know uh, sometimes you become too excited about an idea you simply jump into it and then sure. after six months or one year you realize that okay this is not taking us anywhere so it would be better to spend more time initially and to develop the idea test it run it uh, think about it day and night and then probably run it through your family and friends uh, get as much feedback as possible don't think that okay if i tell my idea to someone else he is going to steal that idea you know the ideas are plenty there are so many ideas around the world but it is mainly the execution that matters hmm. execution demands evaluation is basically what i'm defined so uh, with this we would like to conclude our session with you we are deeply obliged that you took out the time to interact with us and share your precious insight with us we look forward to seeing mill basket success in the future thank you thank you hope you guys enjoyed this episode so stay tuned on our youtube channel until we meet next time on let's go candid with urja thank you